welcome everybody. Welcome coming into the web show. To episode one of our web show presented by Life After Films. Hope you're all well in these crazy, crazy times. What is the web show? I hear you are. It's a good question. Can you tell us a little bit more about what we should expect? That is a great question. Well, the web show for us is building a community of like-minded people who love 80s films and want to celebrate them as much as we do. It's a place where we can all chat to each other, there's interviews, there's competitions, and, and we can- Celebrate the love of these great movies. Yes. Why are we doing this? I hear you ask. Well, we made a documentary called Life After Flash, which we hope you heard of it. Ash here produced it. You will recognize his name from the credit if you've this seen guy. it. Um, and as a result of that, we had done that film through Crown. And you directed it. Don't forget to big <laughs> yourself up. <laughs> we directed it and edited it. Um, but Life After Flash was done through crowdfunding and that process for us was really exciting and rewarding because it, for us it was a film that felt like it was made by the fans as well as being for the fans. You know, we on this journey, it was a long journey, four or yeah. five years, but we really got to know the people who helped in whatever way, whether it was the, the financial backing, whether it was helping with couches to sleep on or hard drives. Sending hard sent. drives, getting involved, or even just giving, you know, giving loads of enthusiastic help. You're also gonna meet the third part of our team. We are based in the UK and our sort of brother from another mother in the life after world. Uh, you're gonna meet Bob soon. So more on that in a little while. Yes, yeah, so life after films is the two of us and Bob. And because of our experience on Life After Flash and because we all know that documentaries take so long to make and we'll get to our second one in a minute, um, we wanted to create this show so we had more regular content and regular interaction with this community that we're building, Life After Community, where we can all just hang out and celebrate together. And it also gives people a way to be involved with the future life after films. Yeah, we've, we've found that making this film has been such a communal experience that we actually want everybody involved here on in. And because it takes two or three years to make a film, we thought we put out a regular weekly show. We've got really great connections because of what we're filming. We've got loads of sort of great behind the scenes connections, connections with the stars of the films. We wanted to share that and invite you to be part of the journey. Fans are a hugely important part of this world. Without the kind of fans of Flash, we could never have made it. And without the fans of the other films we're making, we couldn't make them either. So we wanna get you all involved. And really, this is our world. So we wanna hear from you guys about what you'd like to see. And we will be putting this show out every week to build a really fun, exciting place where we can all hang out together. Yes, and it also gives us a place to all chat about all things film while we're making the second of our Life After now, series. Now, what is the second Life After series? Tell us more. So the Life After series is really what Flash was. It's a celebration of an 80s film, maybe 90s later, but currently 80s films, um, with a biographical look at the main star. So the second in the series, if you don't already know, is Life After the Navigator which looks at the 1986 classic Flight of the Navigator with Joey Kramer. That is currently in post-production, still a few more things to do on it, um, but that will hopefully be finished end of this year. It will definitely be year. finished end of this year. We're getting very close. But again, it takes so long to make these documentaries that we wanted to put this content out in the meantime, but it also then gives us a chance to show you maybe snippets of the production process and what goes into making these documentaries. It's quite a lot of hard work, to be honest, but it's very, yeah, very rewarding. I mean, a bit exhausted. Um, so we have a really great show for episode one. Thank you all for joining us on this premiere. I'm sure hopefully everyone's chatting to us because we'll be liking and subscribing yeah. for future fun episodes. Yes. So we do make sure you watch the show because at the end of the show, we'll have a competition with a question relating to the show. So we'll kick things off. We chatted to the fabulous Flash Gordon earlier in the week. Sam J. Jones himself, people. Welcome, Sam, Flash Gordon, to a, to being our very, very, very first guest ever. Come into our basement. On the web show. We couldn't have asked for anyone else to be our first guest. How are you? How is lockdown? Great, thank you for having me and the honor of being your very first guest. How have you been keeping yourself entertained in these crazy times? Oh, well, a lot of pinball. As you can see, I've got the Flash Gordon pinball machine and it's in my gym, which is my garage. If we were going to talk workout tips, because when we saw you 
shooting life after flash we had a few you were very good on the tire the tractor tire and that that was it looked so easy but it's so hard to do right he, sam has this huge tractor tire in his backyard that he kind of hits with this how big's the hammer like a six pound mallet or Sledge something? Hammer. Well, I, 10 years ago i started with a uh, eight pounder and now believe it or not i'm using a, a 30 pounder mm. which is i know it doesn't 30 pounds doesn't sound like a lot, but for sledgehammers, when you're doing a multiple um, uh, hits, uh, continuous, uh, like a thousand hits, it's a monster. If you were gonna give people your top lockdown workout tip, what would it be? Well, I would just say what I do is, it's, it's gotta be fun. It's gotta be fun. I mean, for me, one of the most boring things to do is the stationary bicycle. So. You know, I used to ride the mountain bike a lot, but um, a lot of way too many accidents, way too many accidents. And so now, so what I do is I'll roll my stationary bike out outside on the driveway. <laughs> I do the cardio weights and I do the sledgehammer on the tractor tire. I like to climb the rope. Yeah, it's fun. And you, you can still climb the rope? We've seen it with our own eyes. We've seen you do it. I actually have a rope in my garage, believe it or not. But the, the garage is only nine feet high or something like that. So the only way I can practice is I, I go up one, two, and then I go down one, two. I keep doing that. Or I do, I do rope pull-ups, you know. Talk to us about, this is the 40th anniversary of Flash Gordon. You yes. all look like you're still 21, 40 years. So you had plans to do this reunion tour. So tell us about that and tell us how your plans have been altered and what are you going to do moving forward? Yeah, well, no, it started out really, really well. I think, uh, Brian, you know, we have uh, Melody Anderson, Brian Blessed, and Ornella Muti on board for the world reunion tour. Obviously, the virus put a kink in everything. We started out, we did a couple. Brian and I did Liverpool, right? I think we did Liverpool. Mm -hmm. Um, and we and Brian and I and we did uh, Richmond, Virginia. Uh, I think he had to. Yeah, he, he couldn't make that because something. I think he's scheduling. But Melody and I did uh, Richmond uh, Galaxy Con. And we have a whole uh, many many. But as you know, the comedy cons are being postponed to a different date. So we're still waiting for those those uh, revised dates to be announced. But definitely uh, coming to the UK, we're booked for. Scotland in October. Wales is coming up. They were talking late August, so it, it may it may continue for late August. If not, I'm sure it'll be moved on. But many, many other cities around the world are, are going to revise and update. It's, it's difficult when you've got thousands of people kind of all from over the world, all mm. coming to one place and all mingling. And it's it's not an easy thing when you're trying to control something like this. Some of the obviously, it's a time to be really creative and think outside the box, think outside the convention center, you know. And some promoters are looking at um, parks outdoors, um, which I think is brilliant, yeah. You know? And also, Flash was released December, so technically, it can still be a anniversary into 2021, yeah. Uh, Flash Gordon was released Christmas. 1980 and carried over into uh, early 1981. So that's what we're going to, even before the virus came, this is what we plan to do. You start in uh, uh, 2020 and carry it over into early 2021. So it's working out perfect. I know that you had been speaking to Max too, hadn't you, about him being involved? Yeah, I mean, I was ta primarily talking to his son, Cedric. What a name of Max von Sydow and Cedric von Sydow. Uh, but no, uh, Cedric was great. And, you know, Max, uh, in 90, we started talking, I don't know, six, seven, eight months ago, maybe more. And, you know, Max really, it's, it, it's not, it doesn't really do personal appearances. However, we were working on doing a private little deal, maybe at a rep, because, you know, he was living in France at a, at a place, uh, a restaurant in, in Paris. And we were in the early stages of talking about that, and it was looking really good. And then, of course, Cedric was doing uh, the documentary 
uh, as a filmmaker on his father. So I, I th the good thing is they finished that, but obviously Max passed away and, uh, you know, we, we didn't get to do that. Mm. That's but a I, shame. I take, I take with that a lot of memories. He was wonderful to me and everybody on the set. And as you know, Brian Blessed told you all the Max von Sydow stories. For, for many hours. For many hours. Stories. <laughs> well, we'll finish up. What, what is then one of the most cherished memories you have of knowing and working with Max? Well, he was just a real gentleman. And he really had a, you know, a lot of actors want the big flats. We, we were in London and I, I didn't ask for it, but they gave me this incredible flat on number 44 Hill Street. Matter of fact, anybody listening in the UK, just go to number 44 Hill Street and look at that. I had a tree in my living room, okay? And I think they were paying a thousand pounds a week. So when I went by there two years ago, three years ago, I asked the one guy, I said, now what does it cost now to rent that particular flat? He goes, oh, that's about 25 to 30,000 pounds mm. a month, a month. Anyway, uh, but, 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 didn't want to get off on a rabbit trail. So that's what I had that they gave me. Max wanted to be away from the city and out in the country so he could do what? So he could focus on his task at hand, his character of Ming the Merciless. And uh, so he taught me that, too. If you're really going to be a professional, just, you know, whatever it takes to do to eliminate all the hindrances and the obstacles to focus on your character. And, you know, he, he gave me some good advice about saving money and, and just being a professional on the set. He was wonderful. And I'll, I'll always uh, remember that. Also with the 40th anniversary, Studio Canal have their amazing re-release of Flash Gordon, Definitely the UK. I know 4K. there's 4K, 4K. Blu-ray. I know that there's other territories to be announced, but definitely the UK. And it's this amazing five-disc set. Life After Flash is included on it. It comes out early August, um, but it really is an amazing thing. Mike Hodges had a lot to do with the restoration of it as well, uh, which yeah. is very exciting. So keep an eye out for that. It's a jam-packed Flash it Gordon jam -packed fest. jam-packed Flash Gordon fest. Um, so that's going to be really exciting. And there's also Big Chief. I think you said figurines that are available at the moment. Yeah, but Big Chief Studios out of the UK is doing a high-end high action figure. Uh, um, Bain, Bain the Merciless and Flash Gordon. And then in, in the States, you've got Boss Fight Studios. It's also doing the... Uh, and, and they're both referred to as the 40th anniversary action figure. We should see if we can get some of those as a competition prize. I think you're going to say, show. let's see if we can get action figures of us. Oh, that's <laughs> like, as well. Yeah, I'm not sure we're ready for action figures yet bonus. on show one. What else is coming up for you, Sam? Yeah, no, there are a couple of things. But, you know, this great documentary I did called Life After Flash. I haven't heard it's of it. I've heard it's great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's amazing. We're still getting, I mean, you know, as you know, I don't, I'm preaching to the choir here, you know, but the, the feedback is just it's, it's just amazing. It's just amazing. Uh, I'm getting I'm getting emails and letters from the fans and even people that know me for years that I've worked with who said that it was literally life changing for them. And um, I, I'm, where especially during and it was perfect timing, uh, Lisa and Ash that it, that's out now for people to see mm -hmm. because uh, this is a time you know being confined or isolated a lot of people are doing the self reevaluation and a lot of people said they really relate to you know uh life after flash uh, a lot of issues maybe not exactly the same but uh, uh similar uh, you know to to what i went through and all of that and you guys captured that and you're not so here's the cool thing i don't know if you've heard this particular descriptive line but or, or what I'm about to say, but you, you you captured something, even though it was you know Sam Jones and the entertainment side and everybody else affiliated with me or who's touched my life or vice versa. But, but you, you really um, have presented something, and it just so happened you know during this virus, uh, international, global virus, you presented something to people that uh, <laughs> extremely relevant that they can yeah. relate to. 
in their own. So they took my, <clears throat> our personal stories, excuse me, and they just replaced either the name Sam Jones with theirs. Mm. And uh, I don't know if you've heard that kind of angle before, but uh, it, it, it's remarkable. It is absolutely uh, remarkable. You get emails almost daily, don't you? We daily. Li literally daily yeah. emails from people saying how it touched them, how it was remarkable, how honest and open you were. And it's really nice to see that kind of feedback. I mean, Lisa comes running in always excited when she receives them and reads them out. And there's so many of them. But she sends out li personalized little letters with every every Blu-ray or DVD she sends out. And a little, a little sticker note. and a little... So she's yeah putting the miles in. Yeah, and I think, you know, people take the time, like you say about Comic-Cons, people take the time to pay the money to go to Comic-Cons, to queue up to talk to you. <laughs> people take the time, especially at the moment, maybe not working, to buy a copy of the disc. I think it's nice to do a little thank you note, a little yeah. handwritten note for it. Of course. I'm really pleased that it's been touching people and, and uh, yeah, it's out. it's been out for a year now, can you believe? Yeah. But it's 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 available at all it's good available. at all good <laughs> retailers from lifeafterflash.com. I'm going to do a prop segue if that's all right, just quickly because because um, our dear friend and collaborator Bob Lindemeyer is is kind of part of our whole Life After team, a part of this show, and we're going to be doing kind of sections with him talking about props, and yep. he's going to be our guy with all of that. Is there any with, with Flash Gordon? Are there any kind of key props or things from it that you kind of wish and just think oh man i wish i'd have held on to that so that was part one of sam's interview there's even more coming next week that means you'll have to tune in again next week what a shame so we did talk about life after flash in that segment if you haven't seen it quick plug Whoop. Then Whoop. it's out now so few ways you can get it lifeafterflash.com free shipping to the uk and ireland uh, you can get both of these discs they're region free each disc has different bonus features on them so if you want to see everything you have to get both but that wasn't why i did it i did it because there was so much content i couldn't fit it on one disc but the blu-ray also comes with this very cool collector's booklet great to sign if you ever see sam at a comic con lifeafterflash.com it's also available on amazon if you want to stream it what about if we want to win one of those? I'm glad that you asked how you win one because that is the prize of our competition. It's a signed DVD, Life After Flash DVD, signed by Sam and myself. It's a bit don't fun. don't play yourself down. <laughs> that's some that's some big big news but right there. Signed signed disc. So that is the competition. But you'll have to find out how at the end of the show. And you'll need to watch this next segment because there is a question about it. And this is a segment introducing our partner in this, our, as I said before, our brother from another mother in this world. He is in Seattle, so he's not sat here with us. We wish he was though. We wish he was, we wish he lived closer because we'd hang out a whole lot more. But Bob was so involved when we met him in the whole Life After Flash process and he's been such an absolute stalwart in terms of his support and his ability to kind of bring enthusiasm and so much skill in prop stuff, graphic design, just he's an absolute legend. And a great example why it's so good doing these films with fans because if we didn't do the crowdfunding or didn't have that fan interaction, we would never have met Bob. Yeah, which would have been disastrous. So why don't we meet Bob, bring him in and ask him a few questions. You may have also seen him in Life After Flash. He is, as Ash put it earlier, a life a after, a brother, life from after brother from another mother. Bob Lindenmeyer, welcome to your segment in our little web show. I'm super excited about this. It's kind of uh, Life After Flash part two. So Bob is our third part of our Life After family. He's over in Seattle, we're here in the UK, and we met Bob when we were making Life After Flash. We did, well Bob reached out to me uh, to say, hey, I heard you're doing this documentary, how can I help? And little did I know what an impact Bob would have in the documentary. Not only was he in it with his amazing prop collection, if you've watched the documentary, you will know him. And if you haven't, you should do. Uh, he also did the opening titles. He also supplied that amazing behind the scenes footage, which how he got it, I don't know. So Bob, first of all, give a little introduction about why prop collecting. I always think of it as the grown-up version of action figure collecting. Um, 
you know, growing up with Star Wars generation, I've always been an avid toy collector of stuff from my youth. And uh, around the dot com era, I uh, I got a really great job and I was making a, lots of disposable income. And every week we would essentially go to the toy store and buy just like a handful of X, whatever it was at the time. Uh, and there was and there was a moment where I realized that if I like didn't go to the toy store every week and buy something, I could save enough funds to actually buy something from the movie. Like I remember the exact day where the light bulb went off. I was at work at Nintendo searching online because they had awesome internet there. And uh, and I was just like, oh, I'll just search Boba Fett. And, uh, and a screen used, allegedly screen used, uh, Boba Fett rocket pack was up for auction. Like the price point was too, too big uh, because I hadn't got completely addicted yet. It, it was a steal, honestly, at the time. I was like, oh, well, I need something from Flash Gordon for sure. So, I, you know, search Flash Gordon. And, uh, and the short version is this guy in Scotland, I have no idea who he was, was selling a uh, uh, Flash Gordon sword, which at the time I thought, like, that was going to be the gold standard, right? Like, back then I figured it was probably the only one in existence, and it was Sam's, and it was amazing. Uh, and it's that one. Uh, so that was my first prop. I know you've talked you've talked before about being like a custodian of these these mm. props and being responsible for you know for for the care of them. And I always thought that sounded like such a sort of magical thing, just kind yeah. of holding on to these things and making sure people can enjoy them. Like I I really think it's important to share this stuff, especially since it's so so unique. Uh, you know, I know there's a lot of other prop collectors where like they'll buy something and it kind of goes in the black, you know, the black box, like at the at the end of Raiders of Lost Ark and like never to be seen again. So it'd be great if you could tell your story about how you met Sam in the first place. There was a guy, I don't even remember his name. He was essentially like a friend of Sam put on eBay a bunch of uh, Flash Gordon like press kits and blah, blah, blah. Uh, and at the for like an astronomical price, uh, but in the description said if you buy, Sam Jones Flash Gordon will personally deliver. And I was like, wait a minute, <laughs> this guy knows Sam. Uh, so then, much like when I got a hold of you, I just full court press, uh, you know, tried to be really nice and 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 get in and. Uh, for some strange reason, I did, and I got uh, Sam's phone number from this guy. You know, I asked Sam, I was like, Sam, I really want to do, like, a full uh, film commentary with you, right? Like, Mike Hodges has done one, and Brian Blessed has done one, but, like, I mean, you're the guy, right? And and this was still pretty young in, in, in our relationship, and, like, and I know you had a similar experience where it's just like, okay, do I, do I ask him like really what happened yeah and sam and i like had a discussion about it and of course if you've seen the movie or whatever like that's that's sam like that's that guy he, you know he's totally open book and uh and he was like oh yeah yeah we should totally do that and so i started making this big plan to do this uh dvd commentary and he's like you know i could get melody hold on a hold, hold on puts me on hold and calls melody right away because again you hang out with sam uh he just he's he's mission critical all the time he doesn't wait no and uh he called melody and melody was like oh yeah i'd love to do it but actually like i met this guy at a comic con and he wants to do one and of course she didn't know who bob was so she's like i want to use my guy and sam's like well i don't know who that is i want to use my guy so then uh me and the other guy uh kevin uh joined forces essentially to figure out how we could get them both together uh which ended up me uh flying myself and sam and a bunch of my movie props to new york to meet melody and uh and kevin and we ended up 
filming it in Kevin's house. And that was the first time I believe I actually met Sam in person. And he was kind of, again, this is before Ted, like before Flash was like back in the zeitgeist. Like he flew out and like he didn't really have anywhere to stay. It's like, Sam, let's just crash on Kevin's couches. Two old manky couches next to each other. Uh, and Sam and I, you know. There's a TV show format for you. It's like you living with Sam in some sort of uh, New York apartment. Yeah, no, it was super odd. And of course, all night I was just like, it's like... But of course, we are hit on the web show. I love the idea that this segment, which is called... <laughs> not only explores your collection, but you know so many people to explore their collections. But then it's like, how do people find them? Uh, like the props out there that are these like mythical props that are, people are looking for them and you know, and how do you tell that a prop is real? And so I love that your segment's gonna yeah. be. And we, we're lucky enough to have stayed at Bob's as well. Oh, and we basically have stayed in that. I remember getting up to go for a pee in the middle of the night and Creature from the Black Lagoon was looming out at me. I think it's such an interesting uh, slice of, of culture and especially now sharing some of the cool stuff I have it's really important, uh, which you'll see once we start putting these together, uh, like I really geek out on like the details. If there's anybody out there just thinks, wow, I wonder what happened to X prop or yeah. whatever. And you, you know, again, we can get some interaction going on with Common. the community. This is a, this is a community here. Everyone can now be friends with each yeah. other. We can all geek Common, out together. Share. This is a safe geek space. <laughs> it's the trust We're in the trust tree, tree the geek trust tree with the, with the owl. Yeah. So anyone out there who has any thoughts or any props themselves, comment. I well, I should yeah. ask actually next week. Oh yeah. Can you give us a, can you give us a hint on what we Without giving it away, what prop are you going to be talking about? in next week's show. When you guys came out and we filmed my collection and, and stuff, I really had a regret because literally I had been working on a deal for a prop while you guys were out there, out here, and uh, and the deal didn't close until after you were gone, and I thought it would have been a really important piece in the Life After Flash film, and I really regretted, you know, the timing of, of that. So next week I want to share the part and almost do a recreation uh, of, of the scene that you could easily just plug right into Life After Flash so it feels more complete. What a proper cliffhanger for the episode. Yeah, so make sure you join us next week where we're going to be back with Bob doing more in the Bee Cave. The Bee Cave, love it. And that brings us to the end of episode one of The Web Show. The inaugural episode. Hope the origins it. episode. I like the term that it's an origins it episode. It is the origins episode. Most important though, before we go, competition. Now. We How'd do, you win it? We, I'm so glad he asked. Not only do you have to subscribe to win this, so please subscribe. <laughs> Subscribing allows you to be part of this community. It ensures that we know that you're around, that you're supporting, and then we can interact with you, and then you are notified when new shows come up. Right. And you can tell us what you want to see. Get tell involved. us what you want to see. Who do you want us to interview? What do you think of the show? What do you think of Flash Gordon? What do you Have think a of voice. Get involved. Be one of us. You already are by watching, but stay one of us. So you have to subscribe to be in the running. But also comment below what was the prop, the very first prop that Bob ever acquired. It's a good one. And if you watched the last segment, as I'm sure you did, you will know what that first prop that he ever bought was. Until we see you next week for the second episode of The Web Show. As Arnold Schwarzenegger said, we'll, we'll be, be back. back. He didn't really say that. He said, I'll be back, well, but we'll be back. <laughs>